want to bring in Jennifer Koffendover and Susan Constantine. Susan Constantine is a trial strategy expert and a jury consultant, and Jennifer Koffendover is a former FBI special agent. Susan, 40 minutes before you call your only surviving son, all while you're freaking out that your family's under attack because of the boat accident, how's the jury going to see that? Well, I think that just the jury are just like just the general public. So the general public and the jury are looking at the order in which he is making these calls. So what we know in statement analysis is that people will uh, mention names, events, or occurrences of the order of importance. The fact that it took him 45 minutes to be able to call his own son is was buying time, and I think the jury is going to see that. It feels weird to me. Jennifer, the jury is one thing, right? We're the average folks. But what about law enforcement like you? Like, I know you guys smell a rat way quicker than we do. Uh, what do you think the law enforcement officers investigating saw in that? Oh, this is a win for the prosecution and uh, a red beacon for law enforcement. Look, there is no reason why a father, after losing uh, his son and his wife to this horrible tragedy, wouldn't call his son, especially if he thought he could be in danger, especially if the Murdochs were being targeted. So it makes absolutely no sense. And those jurors will see through it. And law enforcement saw through it within minutes. Okay, so speaking of what law enforcement saw, this body cam video, I actually want to play for you the exact moment where it crossed Alex's mind to maybe get a hold of Buster. And it happened when he had finally gotten through to his brother, Randy. So let's just listen in as he's um, on body cam and he's on that phone call. Randy, what about Buster? You got to get... Mr. Buster, can y'all get a police officer with my oldest son in Columbia? So, Susan, it's got to be me who tells Amanda that that sounds, you know, distressed and, and concerning. My bigger issue is not that he has concern for how his son Buster is going to take the news, but that he should have been concerned that Buster wasn't lying dead in a pool of blood somewhere else. I know he was 200 miles away, but wouldn't that be your first thought? Yes, and the other thing is, too, what really bothered me about that is that he asked a question, and then he was offering, asking for a response when he said, right. So he wasn't convinced himself. He was waiting to see what the officers suggested, what he should do next, and that is always a big red flag for me. Okay, then there's this last part, Jennifer. At 1036... I told you that he had uh, made an effort to call his brother Randy, the fourth, fifth attempt to, to get a hold of Randy. And then at 1040, four minutes later, he's Googling on his phone, Whaley's Edisto. Uh, it's a local restaurant. And then, he, I mean, whoa, that four minutes after that, he's, he's calling Buster. So in between the Randy call and the Buster call, there's a Google search of a, of a restaurant. C could we chalk that up to just like an accidental you know, you swipe accidentally and you hit your browser and it starts searching? Or is that something we, that he needs to be really worried about? No, uh, he needs to be worried about that. I believe he was thinking and not feeling. And his lack of emotion caused this succession of calls that really make no sense to anyone that's being uh, in a traumatic situation uh, that's just lost. Um, their family. You would be so emotional. You would be wanting to reach out for your son. You wouldn't be asking, could law enforcement contact them? You would have already placed that call. And that's the problem, Ashley. This is somebody who's sort of thinking through things and not feeling. I certainly wouldn't be thinking about dinner reservations at that point or takeout. Um, okay. Susan Constantine, Jennifer Coffin-Duffer, thank you both. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Ashley.